Hi guys, Fabio back once again, probably with my, and it'll be my final review for tonight. And I am reviewing the final film in the Phantasm franchise till this point, Phantasm 4, Oblivion. This is the Anchor Bay re-release. Um, got a commentary and a behind the scenes. You know, not much, but it is better than the old DVD which just had a trailer. So that is that DVD. And Phantasm 4, Oblivion picks up right where Phantasm 3 left off. And, you know, as we saw at the end of Phantasm 3, Mike is leaving because, you know, he's slowly beginning to make a transformation. And we're not quite sure what he's transforming into, but we know that the tall man is behind it, and Mike basically leaves to seek answers. And Reggie is just kind of like, you know, uh, done at this point. You know, he's not really sure what's going on, you know, but, you know, he's actually persuaded by Jody, you know, to to just keep going and, and help Mike out because he's the Mike is the only friend you know that Reggie has and Reggie's the only friend that Mike has so you know so basically yeah Mike travels into Death Valley where the where the tall man leads him and he begins to learn the truth behind the tall man as you know he travels across different dimensions and through different time periods discovering the secrets behind the tall man and Reggie's not far behind and he's ready for a final battle and basically that is the plot in a nutshell of Phantasm for Oblivion and with this film uh, Coscarelli went back basically to the original style from the first movie um, after Phantasm 3 had come out some people had complained that it had gone too far into the action and comedy genres so Coscarelli with his next film wanted to do something that was in vain of the original so you know we basically have you know, the entire original cast. We have Angus Scrim, Reggie Bannister, A. Michael Baldwin, and Bill Thornberry back. We also have a couple of side, or two side characters. Uh, we have a zombie cop played by stuntman Bob Ivey in, in a great sequence, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then we have Heidi Marnhut, I guess that's her name, who's this beautiful girl that Reggie picks up and he finds out that it's just another one of the tall man's traps. You know, but basically we have the original Phantasm cast. And, you know, also, you know, Coscarelli wanted to show, you know, a lot or some of the deleted scenes from the original Phantasm. We get a good, a couple of deleted scenes, some of the different, uh, one I think was a different ending that they were going to do that, you know, ended up not being used. And it, it just kind of tells the story a little bit more and goes a little more in depth about the tall man and his intentions and stuff like that. And it works out perfectly. I know in an interview, Coscarelli did say that he was basically just making the movie for the money, but I think he was just kind of playing off that fact, you know, of what was really going on, because Coscarelli doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would eat, say something like that. I think he was just saying it, you know, just to kind of play off the fact of what was really going on on set. Uh, Phantasm 4 is actually, I think, the, the shortest uh, filming uh, period. They shot the movie in 23 days. I mean, that's not a hell of a lot of day. That's, you know, two and a half weeks. I mean, that that's awesome. And, I mean, it's a great flick. I'm just going to say it. Phantasm Oblivion, Phantasm for Oblivion, it's a great flick. If you haven't seen this one, check it out. You will enjoy it. I mean, it's just back to the basics. And that's why it works so well. Because it's just like, this is Phantasm, you know. And that's awesome. You know, I, that's probably the thing I love about the most. It's, it's like, well, if... This is basically like the real sequel to Phantasm, if you think about it, you know what I mean? So, I'm not putting down two or three, I'm just saying, like, you know, it feels like that. It feels like, wow, this is like Phantasm 2, you know what I mean? So, it's awesome. Um, you know, once again, great score. Uh, Christopher Stone did the music all by himself, uh, because Fred Myro had actually passed away in between Phantasms uh, 3 and 4. So, you know, they said that it was very sad that, you know, because he was missed, but, you know, they, you know, they got the music done. And they said it was kind of weird because they kind of felt like his presence there when they were doing the music. So that's kind of an interesting little side note. Um, once again, a great phantasm atmosphere. You're not really sure what's going on, you know, and you're asking yourself all kinds of crazy questions because you, you're not supposed to believe what you see. You're, you're supposed to believe what is, you know, and that's. One of the main recurring themes in the entire Phantasm saga. Another thing, like I said, I love the fact how you know he's incorpor incorporating deleted scenes from the original back into the movie. Well, into this movie 
to further tell the story and to kind of bring new insight onto things. Like, well, how did that happen? And how did this happen? And what really happened there? You know, it's just awesome. And, and Coscarelli is a great storyteller. You know, the Phantasm films, um, Survival Quest, uh, The Beastmaster. You know, they're all great storytelling movies. You know, Coscarelli is one of, the, in my opinion, one of the most underrated minds in Hollywood. You know, it's, and I, I love the fact how he doesn't do a movie, like, all the time. Like, he, he does a movie... And then he'll wait, and then he'll do another movie, and that's perfect. I mean, you look at look how much time passes between each Phantasm film. Um, you know, look how much time passes. He did Bubba Hotep, which I have not seen yet. I would like to see that because not only does he direct it, but I think Reggie Bannister has a part in it, and also Bruce Campbell's in it. So, you know, so I would definitely like to check that out because of you know it's number one, it's Coscarelli. Number two, it's Bruce Campbell. So. But um, I know he's got a new film coming out called, I think, John Dies at the End. Angus Scrimm is supposed to be in it, so I would like to check that out when it eventually does come out. Um, and actually, at the end of the video, I will talk about my thoughts on A Phantasm V. Um, I will talk about that at the very end of the video. Um, you know, another thing, once again, great special effects. KMB actually came back to do the effects for this one. They previously worked on Phantasm II, uh, Greg Nicotero helped out with the special effects on that. Um, I'm not sure who did the special effects for 3. I should have looked that up before you know I did this review, but that's okay. You know, it's not a big deal. Um, I also love the narration. You know, We have several points in the film where Mike or, or Reggie does it in the beginning, but Mike does several narrations in the film, and I like that aspect. You know, I like how you know he's telling the story and stuff like that. And once again, you know, the thing I really enjoy about the film it's simplicity. The, the movie is so simplistic, it's not even funny. It's like the original. It just goes right back to the best things about the original, those hardcore filmmaking, independent filmmaking tactics that work so well every single time you make a movie like that, and they bring it back, and we have a great time, and that's why I really enjoy it, because it's so simple. Um, you know, once again, the characters. I mean, I keep talking about them in each of the movie, because... It's all the same. You have A. Michael Baldwin as Mike. You know, great. He just pulls the role off so well. And originally, he didn't want to do this, which, once again, like I talked about in my Phantasm 3 review, sometimes he says stuff and you're like, okay, that's cool. And other times, it's like, well, he's kind of sounding like a jerk. You know, he said, I didn't want to do the movie, but, you know, I tried to get them to do something that would keep me on. So he actually co produced this one, and that's what kept him in the franchise. You know, I don't really understand why. You would want to walk away from something this great. I mean, after you just came back on the last movie, but that's purely just my opinion. Um, you know, and then you have, once again, Bill Thornberry as Jody. And in this movie, you find out Jody's true intentions, and you find out what really happened to him. And it just works so well. And it, it just, it's, he plays, they all, they all play off each other so well in each of these movies. It's just so great. I mean, and that's, another reason why I love it, like I talked about in part three, just that family atmosphere, like, these are guys that you would just hang out with, you know, these are like your relatives, and you know, they're not like stars, or, you know, you know, like that, they're just regular people, and that's why a lot of people like, you know, the Reggie Bannister character, because he's the everyman, you know, and that's, that's just awesome, you know, once again, you know, Jody is great, and it's really cool that we get to see a little bit more, and more of a dark side, that's awesome. You know, Reggie, once again, you know, what is what is there to say about Reggie that has not been said before? He is the bald ice cream vendor who runs around with a four-barreled shotgun fighting the undead. What is not to love? Everybody wants to do that. Like I said, the everyman. Everybody wants to do that. Everybody wants to run around and kill zombies. I mean, I would. Of course, I have to shave my head probably and make a four-barreled shotgun, but, you know, I could do that on the weekends. <laughs> um, like I said... Uh, Bob Ivey, who was a stuntman on 3, who come back to do 4, he plays the zombie cop, and that's a great sequence. And Heidi Marnhut, uh, you know, she, she's just a beautiful woman, and, you know, she's, you know, once again, Reggie's trying to get lucky, and, and it just, it don't happen, you know, but that's okay, great sequence, which I'll talk about. Um, then, once again, last but certainly not least, Angus Scrim as the tall man, what's not to love? You know, once again, scariest motherfucker ever. <laughs> you know, and, and unfortunately in this film you can see the that he's aging. 
But, you know, he's the tall man. He is immortal, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it's Angus Scrim, you know. And I love in this film how you get to see where he started and stuff like that, you know, and how the tall man became to be. It just works so, so well, and it's awesome, you know. Okay, now I want to talk about, you know, my favorite part of any review, the breakdown of my favorite scenes. Uh, you know, I love the opening montage that we get where we get to see clips from all the previous Phantasm films as a way to open up this. And then we get a great monologue from Reggie, which is fantastic. And then a little bit later, we get to see a shot of all three of the leads, uh, Bill Thornberry, A. Michael Baldwin, and Reggie Bannister. You know, like they were, uh, it's a scene with Mike and uh, Jody, and Jody talking about how thing, you know, how he wished things could have been better and stuff like that. And you see this shot of all three of them, and it's just, it's kind of eerie, but it's just really cool to see, you know, like the original film, The Three Amigos. I call it The Three Amigos shot. You know, it's just really cool to see that, and, you know, in my opinion. It's just a great shot. Once again, that I just talked about earlier, the zombie cop sequence with Bob Ivy as the zombie cop. He pulls Reggie over, you know, and Reggie looks around, and he comes out of the car, and, you know, Reggie goes in the car, ah, fuck you, fuck you, and he gets on top, comes into the window, Reggie cocks the shotgun, blow me. Kills him, all the ooze comes in Reggie's face and mouth, gets out, he, you know, he locks the cop in the car, and he puts the flare in the gas tank, and the, the car blows up, and then, you know, Reggie, or he walks out, and then he finally dies. Some cops are real assholes. <laughs> you know, it's just great. That's a great scene. Um, I love the Civil War sequence, you know, as we're getting more into the origins of the Tall Man. I love that little Civil War sequence, which, you know, is just so wonderful to see. And it's shot in black and white, which is, you know, my favorite. Um, I love the hanging scene where Mike tries to kill himself, and then, uh, you know, the tall man's like, Where do you think you're going, boy? You know, death is not the escape from me. And then we get to see a deleted ending, or original alternate ending, whatever you want to call it, from the original Phantasm, where they hang the tall man, and then, you know, he's calling out to Mike, and Mike comes out and, you know, cuts him loose, and he says he'll go away. And this was actually, for the longest time, uh, you know, a very popular Phantasm fan like, you know, uh, rumor or myth or something they wanted to see. And then we finally got to see it with this movie, which was great. You know, that was awesome to get to finally see that. Um, you know, I love the scene where Mike goes back in time and he meets Jebediah Morningside, you know, and he's kind of freaked out and we get to see the fortune teller from the original film, which uh, we're not quite sure what she has the connection to the tall man, but Coscarelli knows he's not telling people. To me, I think it's like his wife or his mother or his sister, you know. And she's, I be, to me, she's like the only one that can stop him. And I think maybe if we ever see a Phantasm Five, she'll make a return. But we'll see about that. You know, who knows? We'll just have to see. Um, you know, I love the scene where, uh, you know, Reggie's following the girl and she almost runs over the turtle and the car flips over. And the car blows up. I thought cars only blew up like that in the movies. Well, they do. You know, Reggie's like, well, they do. <laughs> yeah, that's a really cool scene to see. Um, I love the uh, the scene where Jody reveals to Mike, you know, he was taken. You know, we see a deleted scene from the original where Jody goes into his room and closes the mirror. And the tall man's there, you know. Um, I love when Reggie's in the hotel room. And, you know, he's given the grand tour, you know, this is 24-hour room service, and we have, this is our entertainment center, and this is, you know, dial three, and you'll get the spa. You know, it's a great sequence. Um, I love his dream sequence where he wakes up in the graveyard, and he's looking around, and he hears something, and then he turns around to see the tall man, but it's Mike. I mean, that's just, that's a very scary sequence if you think about it. It just plays off so well in contrast to the rest of the movie. And it's like, oh my God, what's going on? You know, and, and that's kind of, I think, you know, one of the, it's very powerful. It's a very powerful sequence, in my opinion. Um, you know, and it really works well, like I say. You know, it's just, it's just a gripping, kind of like, heart-stopping moment. It's like, holy shit. You know, it really is. Um, you know, I love the sequence with the spear tits, <laughs> you know, where Reggie's like, he sees the chest move, and he's like, far out, and then it, it opens up, and the spears come out, and you know, he's fighting against them, and then, you know, he bangs the one with the sledgehammer, and then he activates the tuning fork, which goes back to the original Phantasm, 
and then it was referenced in Phantasm 3, and then finally in this one it was brought back in an even bigger scale. And then we also, what's the matter, Ray? Or no, we're not done yet. Oh, yes, baby, we are done. And, you know, he kills her. That's a great sequence. Uh, I've, uh, actually, this next sequence, the uh, the shot where Mike is in the, um, it's actually Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. Uh, what happened was they could only get like 20 minutes of shooting time. Basically, they didn't have a permit, and they went there on Thanksgiving morning, and they shot that sequence. And it, that is, like they said, they just went in with you know a camera and a couple of people and the actors, and they shot it. And that is filmmaking. That is guerrilla independent filmmaking. That's how you get shit done. And that's just a great sequence where, because of the, the story behind it, it's so great. And you see Angus Grimm walking down Wilshire Boulevard, and then Mike meets Jody, and Jody's like, we have to get out of this dimension, you know, we can catch a plague. Which is actually in reference to an original Phantasm IV screenplay. I think it was called Phantasm 1999. And it was actually written by Roger Avery, who was a Phantasm fan, and he also wrote Pulp Fiction. Um, he was actually going to do another, you know, he wrote a script where the world is kind of ending. And, uh, you know, there's like the plague zone, which is where the tall man was. So, you know, Reggie has to go in there to fight the tall man. And Bruce Campbell was actually going to co-star in it. Like, that was the whole, like, story of it. But the script never got made because it was supposed to be about $10 million, And they couldn't get the money for it or something. But an interesting concept. Um, so that's a great sequence, you know, in my opinion. And I love the sequence where Reggie gears up, you know, he's loading the forty five, he's getting a knife ready, you know, he's getting the, the shotgun ready and he wears his ice cream vendor outfit from the original and that's just probably my favorite moment in the film, you know, where Reggie gears up for the final confrontation. And then which leads into the finale where uh Mike sees how the tall man became to be, really, and tries to stop him. But, you know, he can't because he's in a different dimension. And then we really find out what happened to Jody as, you know, we find out he's actually a minion of the tall man. And, um, you know, uh, they get a hold of Mike and they try to... Because remember, at the end of Phantasm 3, Mike was starting to transform. So now they're trying to get the property of the tall man out of Mike. You know, if you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, turn him into the tall man, basically. And then, you know, we have a heartfelt moment where, you know, Reggie, or not Reggie, I'm sorry, where Mike stabs, um, and this is a little bit before, I'm sorry, where Mike stabs uh, Jody and says, I just had to be sure before I killed my brother. And then, you know, we, he comes back and we find out, you know, as, you know, in fa at the end of Phantasm, you know, Jody died in a car wreck. And Jody's like, I, was, I died in the car wreck. And then I guess he was, you know, reanimated to be one of the tall man's minions. So you're just kind of like, oh, shit. <laughs> You know, you're like, wow, you know, so there you go. And then, you know, Mike loses the tuning fork because Reggie, they actually come out and they go back to stop the tall man and Reggie gives him the tuning fork just in case. And he loses the tuning fork because that, that's what can stop the tall man. And then basically the tall man reclaims the property of his and goes back into the space gate and then Reggie... You know, uh, Mike is laying there dying. You know, Reggie, I'm dying. And then, you know, uh, Reggie goes into the space gate. And then we actually get yet another deleted scene from the original where Mike gets picked up by Reggie. And Reggie hears something. And did you hear something, Mike? Just the wind, Reggie. And Mike's got this smile on his face, you know. And, and then the movie just ends. It just ends. I mean, you see the ice cream truck driving. And then when I first saw it, I'm like, Huh? I actually rewound the movie to make sure I'm like, did it skip? No, but I mean that, and that's a powerful ending. I mean, to me, the ending represents coming full circle because you have Mike who is basically dying, and you know Reggie, he leaves to go after the tall man, and then um, you know we have the flashback sequence, and then you know it's just like. You know, just the wind, Reg, and then, you know, they drive off and the movie ends. To me, like I said, that represents coming full circle, coming back to where things began. So, you know, it is kind of an eerie sequence, you know, but it, I think Coscarelli did that to kind of bring closure just in case we don't get another Phantasm film. But, you know, it's, 
You never know, because he said, you know, he wants to do more, you know, but I don't know. But my thoughts on a Phantasm 5, like I said, I was going to do that at the very end of the video. I would love to see it. I really would. Um, it probably won't go to theaters. It'll probably be directed video. It'll probably have a lot of CGI effects in it. They're probably going to do it for the lowest amount of money they can. I really hope they get it out sometime soon, because, you know, Angus Scrim and everybody's getting up there in age. So, I mean, it would be great for them to just do one last hurrah and have it be the final film, you know, and just kind of turn, close the book and be over with. I mean, I mean, everybody would love to see it. And I know a couple years ago, uh, a video circulated from a table reading of Phantasm V. And it was a sequence where you see Angus Scrim and Michael Baldwin, and they're reading, and Angus Scrim says something like, it's over, and then... Mike is like, no, it's not. And then you hear a gunshot, I think, and it ends. So, I mean, I don't know if that was a legitimate, uh, you know, table reading or what the deal was with that. Um, but personally, once again, I would love to see a Phantasm Five. I would love to see how Coscarelli brings closure to the series. You know, I think, once again, like, everybody would love to see it. You know, I would just, I love these films so much. You know, it's my favorite horror movie series. You know, because of the fact that it has the family, you know, basically, same writer and director on every movie, pretty much the same cast. It has that eerie atmosphere, that surrealistic atmosphere in every movie. You know, it just got, you know, each movie's different. You know, number one is a straight horror film. Number two is an action horror film. Number three is an action comedy horror film. And number four is, an, you know, more of a science fiction film dealing with, different dimensions and time travel and stuff like that but they're all great movies if you haven't seen them check them out you know i hope you'll enjoy them but uh in conclusion i just want to thank you guys for watching these phantasm reviews i hope you enjoyed them they were a lot of fun to do a lot of fun to talk about my favorite series you know some of my favorite movies of all time mm -hmm. you know and uh next i'm actually going to review another franchise the one that kind of started it all i'm going to review the halloween series uh, starting with the original, uh, going through the first seven, uh, and then doing a rant on Resurrection and Rob Zombie's uh, Halloween film. And I'll also do a little review on Halloween 25 Years of Terror. So once again, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. And just remember, don't believe everything you see, and be careful, because the tall man is watching somewhere in the shadows. Boy! <laughs> I had to, sorry. Peace out, guys. Thanks.